confessing our sin. and set us on the right path in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. Our gathering song is How Great Is Our God.
Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord Amen. our prayer of the day O Lord God merciful judge you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Welcome, Good Shepherd. You look good. Thank you. Our announcements are as follows. There'll be a fish fry next Sunday, next Saturday, September 23rd, beginning at noon. And please see the enclosed flyer for more information. Today is the last day to bring your non-perishable food for the food pantry. Confirmation class will resume on October 8th. The Finance Committee reports that we received tithes and offerings of $3,075 for the week ending September 10th. Lutheran Counseling Center is available for those who might need assistance. Services are provided for individual, group, family, children, bereavement, etc. Many insurance plans are accepted, and there are the numbers that are available for you to call. If you would like to adopt a bill in full or in part, please contact the church office. Our summertime water bill is particularly high because of the sprinkler system to keep our grass green and higher summer rates. So please keep this in mind as you consider adopting a bill or in part. Also, please see the very important information attached from the women of the ELCA regarding their They're gathering on October 14th. Registration forms are available in the Narthex. Also, there are copies of the Bible study fall startup starting Friday, September 15th, and copies are also in the Narthex. 
in our calendar of events, on Thursday, 6.30 p.m., there's a council meeting. Remember the fish fry, Saturday from 12 to 5. Next Sunday, September 24th, is Pentecost 17. There's 9.15 a.m. choir rehearsal, and our service will meet again at 10 a.m. All members are invited to join the council meeting on Zoom this Thursday, September 21st. And that concludes our announcements for this Sunday. And Pastor? Just one um, addendum. The Bible study will be led by um, Pastor Brenda Irving. You know her from Friends of Peace, and it's by Zoom. So you don't have to be there in person. But if you'd like to, the information, once again, is in the back. Anyone on, from online? Our worship will continue. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from you. Bless Genevieve and Lauren, who will read to us the scriptures. Make us hunger for the word of life, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. lesson is a reading from Genesis chapter 50 verses 15 verses 21. Real, realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays back her in, in full for all the wrong that we did to him. So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you to forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of your servants, of the God in your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. The, their brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you indeed harm me, God in, indeed it, it intended it for good in order to preserve in numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide you for for you a little for you, for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking to speaking kindly to them. Word of God, word of life. Good morning, everyone. Okay, we will continue by reading Psalms 103, verses 8 to 13. 
Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You'll not always accuse us, nor will you keep your anger forever. You have not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repaid us according to our iniquities. For us, the heavens are high above the earth. So great is your steadfast love for those who fear you. As far as the east is from the west, so far have you removed our transgressions from us. The second lesson is a reading from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. The Christ this Christian community has significant struggles with diversity. Here, Paul helps us understand that despite different practices in worship and personal piety, we do not judge one another. All Christians belong to the Lord Jesus Christ who died for all of us and will judge each of us. The reading. Welcome those who are weak in faith but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in the honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in the honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in the honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you? Why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel, according to Matthew, the 18th chapter. When Peter asked about the limits of forgiveness, Jesus responds with a parable that suggests human forgiveness should mirror the unlimited mercy of God. The reading, Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, no, seven times, but I tell you, 70 times seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children 
and all its possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I have mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to the torture, to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace, peace, and love to you. Amen. Amen. 
A brief reminder for the coming sermon series as we remember and celebrate the anniversary of Lutheran Church of Good Shepherd that began in 1949 and with the dedication of our current place of worship in October of 1962. The next few weeks will be focused on divine dreaming, what are God's dreams for Good Shepherd in the coming year, and dreaming divine for what have we been created to do using our God-given gifts and talents. Prayerfully, our God will broaden what we know as ministries in ways we never imagined. It doesn't matter if we are ordained to word. Yep, sorry. If we are ordained to word. Let's go back. My computer doesn't want to act right today. It doesn't matter if we are ordained to word and sacrament or word and service or ordained by a church organization. Through the waters of baptism, the Spirit has already ordained us useful to the body of Christ, and the Spirit blows where she chooses. We have biblical references in the Bible of those who have or had God-given dreams. A few of them are Noah, had a vision of building God's ark. Abraham had a dream of fathering God's children. Joseph had a vision of leading God's people. Solomon received a dream of completing God's temple, and Hannah held on to a vision of having God's prophet. Mary was chosen for mothering Jesus, and Peter was selected for the founding of God's church. After receiving God's vision in their hearts, oftentimes dreamers in the Holy Scripture decided to follow God's direction and had gone through somewhat different stages of delay, difficulty, and dead end. But however, by faith, they eventually experience God's deliverance in their lives. God's transformative power calls us through the Spirit to do God's work. You might be wondering, why am I asking us to do all these things related to prayer? Writing down our prayer visions for the church, and why should we write down what we would make our requests to God, and how would they help us? We are doing this to take our prayers to the altar, of God. Second Chronicles 7 states, now, referring to God, my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. Now Habakkuk says, and we might not be too familiar with Habakkuk, but it's, part, it's there in the Bible, part of the Apocrypha, states, God commanded Habakkuk to write the revelation down, precisely so. So our primary text for today will be Jeremiah 29, verses 11 to 13. For surely you know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. And when you search me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. Transformation is exciting, reviving, and most importantly, necessary for the steady spiritual growth. Deep, impactful transformation often comes through the spirit-led and Spirit-led actions regularly leads us beyond Sunday morning and into the world. Our God is in the business of transforming lives and transformed churches and lives have the potential to transform the church community and beyond. God has a dream, a vision for God's church and for us. Sometimes transformation can be difficult our hearts are changed when we move beyond our comfort zones. And in the supplemental text for today from the prophet Jeremiah, the prophet announced God's plan of hope and a future. God's vision for us would include two types of vision. The first type of God's dream is his specific vision for each of us to pursue in our own faith journey. The second kind would be God's general dream for all of us to do something. 
for instance, resembling God's divine characteristics in our lives. This morning, I want us to explore how to discover and develop our God-given unique dream in our faith journey. To do this, I want us to look at each letter of the DREAM acronym. The first letter DREAM stands for the word DEDICATE. To find out our God-given vision, we need to dedicate our lives to God. In the book of Romans, St. Paul encouraged us to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to the Lord, our Creator. Then we are told that we can, will receive our God-given dreams that is good and is perfect. Whether we realize it or not, we spend our time, energy, talents, and resources on something or someone important to us. Putting our best into what we have focused on would be critical for us to carry out our goals. There is nothing wrong with that. And at the same time, we need to think about our God-empowered vision that is inherited. We are encouraged to dedicate to God all of our being, our past events, our present situations, and our future plans, both our private walk and our public journey, both our weekend life at church and our weekly adventure everywhere else. The second letter is R. R symbolizes the work for preserve. To discern our God-given dreams, we need to reserve our time with God alone. And if we go back to the book of Job, we are advised to stop and consider God's wonders. When he suffered losing his God-given vision in his life, Job paused for a while and reflected on how our mighty God operated in all of creation. While having a devotional time with the Lord, Job was amazed at what the Creator God could do for his loved ones and for him. Job stopped questioning why those things happened to his loved ones and himself and started seeing his God-given broken dreams restored. We recall in 1 Samuel when Samuel had a dream and he said, here I am, and speak for your servant is listening. Now during that intimate fellowship with God, Samuel received God's vision. And when Jesus was asked to do many things until the late time of the day, he got up early in the morning and found a quiet place. After that, he told the disciples, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. This is why I have come. And when the Holy Spirit is upon us, we can dream dreams and see visions regardless of age, background, limitations, and circumstances. And that comes to us from the book of Acts. Now the third letter is E, which symbolizes the word for evaluate. To perceive our God-given vision, we need to evaluate our abilities. St. Paul says that we are Christ followers and all of God's handiwork and are called to do the good deeds that God has designed for each of us. And the Lord has given each of us God-given gifts and talents. We inherited all these abilities to use for the Lord and to help others. We all have unique individual gifts in our God-given personalities. To discover our God-given vision, we need to figure out what we are good at, what we can do. This evaluation needs to be done before the Lord only. No comparison is required. If we compare our God-given gifts and talents, we may make two inaccurate judgments, either overestimating our gifts or underestimating our gifts. A fourth letter is A which indicates the word for associate. I like that word. To receive our God-given dreams, we need to associate with godly dreamers. Scriptures tell of the importance of placing ourselves in a divine environment. St. Paul warns the church in Corinth to run away from people who might say or do something keeping us from God's presence. God wants us to be in a place of encouraging experiences such as hope, compassion, and love. 
We are also to pray for our advocate, the Holy Spirit, to intercede for us when we don't know what and how to pray. Now the last letter is M, which stands for the word or work make. When we have the assurance of our God-given vision, we need to make our dream public. In the book of Hebrews, the definition of faith is, it is a confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope and pray for is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, and even though we cannot see it ahead. Hopefully, we will courageously and confidently share our divine goals as we prepare during the coming year. With faith, we visualize our God-given visions and communicate with God to hear what God will have us to do going forward. There is a saying, never let your memory be greater than your dreams. Since you like that, I'll say it again. Never let your memory be greater than your dreams. Memories represent our past events and achievements. And dreams represent our future and fulfillment of what is to be. The question becomes, what is the status of our God-given dream for our church? What is the status of our faith journey today? We need to remember that we are serving the Lord, our mighty God, wonderful counselor, re resurrected Christ, Elohim, God's power and might. Jehovah Yahweh, God's divine salvation. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is present. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. What I would like to do today, um, some people may know and some may not, but I'm going to give us a spiritual journey through Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. I'm going to start in my left your right. In the back is a black Madonna. I don't know if you knew that, but it is back there. And Barbara Walcott Henry, during our um, time when we were preparing for the Easter service, lovingly took her down to make sure that she was clean. In the back, you will also notice three small lights. Our ushers, every single service, lights those candles. That's to remind us that there is a light among us. As you travel a little bit north, you will see the baptismal font. And when the baptismal font is open, it is blessed. And that means, however you wish, if you just want to put your hands over the, bap the water in the baptismal font, that's fine. If you want to touch it and make the sign of the cross, that's great as well. But there's something I want you to know, because oftentimes people don't realize this. In our baptismal font, when the water is let out, you might think that it would go into the sewer system, but that's not true. The water goes directly into the ground, because anything that has been blessed for our God and for our salvation cannot be disrupted by anything else, so it must go into the ground. Now, some congregations don't have, they don't have the luxury of having that, so they then have to take the water out and take it outside and pour it into the ground. I do believe in our sacristy, Millicent, are you here? Does our sink, has it, is it still open and working? Our, we have, we have a, we're blessed. We have a special sink so that, again, all of our sacred when they're washed, it goes into that sink, and that sink, once again, goes directly to the ground. It is not mixed with the water from the rest of the sink, of, of the things that are being washed. Now, I don't know who put this there or what their impact was, but if you notice right over here that there is a ship, a boat, an ark. I don't know if it represents Noah's ark. I don't know if it represents when Jesus calmed the seas and with Peter who was walking on water. I don't know, but it's there. And it's a spiritual symbol for us to meditate on and to pray on. And as we move a little bit further, we have an eternal flame. That flame is always lit. That once again reminds us that God is in the midst of us. 
And when you go a little bit further, you see the tabernacle. And in the tabernacle are the sacred elements once they're consecrated. And again, when you continue to move forward, you see the candles that are lit, reminding us of the light of God in our lives. Are there any questions about them? Does anyone need for me to mention any of it again? So I'm going to go over it once again. We need to remember that we are serving the Lord, our mighty God, wonderful counsel, resurrected Christ, Elohim, God's power. Can you say that? Elohim, God's power. And might. Jehovah Yahweh. God's divine salvation. Jehovah Shema, the Lord who is present. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. So whatever name resonates to us, we remember God has given us the impossible to make possible with presence and might, with dreams and visions, to fulfill God's divine dream in the coming year. May God continue to bless us all. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy and universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Excuse me, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> okay, our service will continue with our prayers of intercession, and our response will be receive our prayer. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. We pray for the church, bless the missions and ministries of diverse congregations, that they uplift the good news of salvation in ways that can be understood. Merciful God. We pray for creation, 
send rain to lands experiencing drought and healing to rivers clogged with pollution, enrich the soil for trees and plants, protect the crops needed to feed those who hunger. Merciful God. We pray for all who govern, encourage those in positions of power to lead with empathy, practice forgiveness, and care for those who struggle. Merciful God. We pray for our neighbors who face illness of any kind, for those strained financially, for all living with chronic pain, mental illness, the disease of addiction, or otherwise afraid or in harm's way. Protect all who cry out for mercy. Merciful God. And we ask for special prayers for Diane Barton, who did have her surgery. Um, I understand she's having a bit of a hard time, so we'd like to keep her in, in prayer as well. Also, we ask for a healing and comfort for the Baptiste family, uh, memorial prayers for Glanville Joseph by Karen Perry, Taylor, and family, for Donald and Dorette, Brandon, Frederica, Buster, Janice, Shatina, Amina, Bridget, Jerome, Nancy, Indira, James and Eleanor, Dwayne, Virginia, Queen Mosley, Heather, Hazel, Joseph, Sherry, Irvin, Julia, Lee, Pastor Brenda Irvin, Medlin, Dorette, Zanitha, Nora, Cecil, Wade, Emily, and again, Diane Barton. Barton, sorry. Merciful God. We pray for this congregation. Open our hearts to practice intentional invitation. Help us to forgive each other, practice patience, and choose to welcome over judgment. Move us to care for those in our community seeking refuge and safety. Merciful God, we give thanks for the saints who died in faith. Show us how to live faithfully, creatively, and lovingly in your church and world, like Hildegard, Abbess of Bingium, whom we commemorate today. Merciful God, remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these in the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace. with your reading today. You always, but you're always wonderful. I'm Janae Bogans, Joyce and John Bogans' daughter. Oh, nice. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 uh,
One of the reasons, one of the reasons um, I'm letting the sharing of the piece go on a little bit longer because I think it feels good. Doesn't it feel good to be able to just come together and share the piece with each other? Um, I, it's just, it's just so fabulous. That's the only thing I can say, and the only thing I can say is thank you, God. Thank you, God, for all this, this coming together that has been happening either um, in person or on Zoom. How many people do we have on Zoom today? That's up. <laughs> That's up. So I, I guess I'm just doing a rough guesstimate. There must be worshiping here a good 50, 60 people, I'm guesstimating. That's right. See how good God is? We just need to continue to give God praise. It's not thanks to me, it's thanks to God. <laughs> In our Lutheran tradition, there are so many things that other denominations um, don't do, but they're important in the life of our, in our, of our church. 
And even though we're Lutheran, um, each, congrega each congregation um, worships a little differently. There are certain things that we have to do um, that's part of our tradition, and we will honor, we will always honor those things because we are Lutheran. And we make no apologies for it, am I, am I correct? One of the things that I would like to mention, which I did not do um, when I was taking us through the journey of the church, is we believe in something called trans, what's, where's my word? Transubstanti transubstantiation. What that means is when we come together, that's two or more are gathered together, God is with us. God is really and truly in the host. God is truly in the wine. That is what we believe. We don't try to explain it because we can't explain it, but it's just what we believe. And just like we don't understand the resurrection, but we believe in it, right? So transubstanti transubstantiation is what we believe when you talk about her Holy Communion. And it can only, a wine and host can only be consecrated where two or more are gathered. And I believe that's according to St. Matthew where that it takes place. So I want us to realize God's presence is always with us. And no matter what is happening throughout the worship service, God's presence is there. And it doesn't mean that our, um, the way we worship is better than any other. No, God is with everybody no matter where God is. But I want us to have a clear understanding of the presence of our God. The Holy Spirit is always leading God in us no matter what we might think, no matter what other folks may say. We're Lutheran, and we're going to do it the Lutheran way. So please, invitation to author, and I'm not supposed to be doing that. Let us be generous in our giving that others may see in us the transforming power of God. Let us be lavish in our gifts that others may draw life from the bounty of God's blessing. We pray and thank you, O oh Lord, for those who are going to um, bl um, bless you with their gifts and offering, either online, in person, in the box in the back, or however they choose to do that. Amen. So let us pray together. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, living God. Time after time, you draw us here to inspire us, feed us, and save us. Especially when our love fails, you are here, steadfast and true. You created this world and called it good. You created us to proclaim your good to all. And so we praise, we raise our voices in praise. Holy, I'm oh sorry. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the, the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit that's poured out on all nations. And the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. 
do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on all gathered under the sound of my voice and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With all your beloved gathered under the sound of my voice and your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you. O oh God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Y'all got a break. Y'all were supposed to be standing. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Yeah. 
in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder, working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder, working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder, working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder, working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. In the precious blood of the Lamb. In the precious blood of the Lamb. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yes, the blood that gives me strength. From day to day, it will ne never, never lose its power. It will never lose its power. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. Oh, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it all for me. One day when he died, yes, he did, and I know it. Oh, the blood, the blood came streaming down. The blood came streaming.
worship God every kind of way. Music. Prayer every way. We worship God. We worship God. We worship God. Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts, strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. People of God, go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit lives in you. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. peace. God is at work in you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.